let's do another one of those videos where we take a movie and uh, behind the scenes, put them together in a mixing bowl, if you like, and take some guesses, what's going on? How do they do it? Maybe we'll learn something. All right, so I know there's already many other videos talking about this film and where all the hidden cuts are and how they built this light tower here, then used CGI to make it look like fire. But there's one part of this movie I didn't know how they did it until recently. So at this point, we're about halfway through the movie. He comes across this burning building. He's like, wow, I, I don't see this every day. He sees this other guy in the distance. He's like, is that my mate? Is that, do I know that guy? No, probably not. So he runs off, goes and hides in this basement, goes into this other room. The light source is this one fireplace on the ground. We see this other girl, they have some dialogue. The camera comes around even more in front of the fireplace and then this happens. And I remember seeing this when I watched it in the cinema and thought, how, where's he, how is there no shadow? Where, where's the shadow from? The camera and the operator just walked in front of the light and there's no shadow over him. It should have looked something like this. And it wasn't until recently when I came across this audio commentary from Roger Deakins and he talks about it. You know, we, we've figured this camera move, but there is only the one light source was the, was the boiler. Uh, and Charlie's working on the Trinity doing this shot. This is an amazing piece of work. But obviously he's wa walking through the light source. So modern technology is, comes to your aid. So we shot an element where he boomed out and didn't have to go through the light source for that one moment. So the, that was used and composited into the main shot, that element of George's face without the shadow. All right, so here's a demonstration on what the hell I think he's saying. <laughs> Fuck. Using this garden broom pole as a, the trinity. They do the whole scene and they go around and they arc around the guy and they cast the shadow on his body. And then they come back, extend the pole out and just do that bit with the pole going in front of him, not casting a shadow on his face. Then they cut that one bit of the shot out, paste it over the top of the shadow shot, do a much better job than I have, then you're good to go. Also, another interesting thing about this scene is that fireplace is actually a small bright LED panel. And then what they've done is replaced it with a CGI fire element. And a big reason you might do that is because, you know, a fire isn't bright enough. The light source has to reach this girl down the back here and just having an actual fire on set would be a pain to manage. And Roger does this stuff all the time. You see in so many movies that he's done, he's shot a light source in the frame and then got VFX to composite a fire or some other element over the top of it. Also in the audio commentary, I think he says something about they dim the light level up and down as the camera's moving around the room. So it would be dimmed up for the shot of her down here. Then when they're a bit closer, it would be dimmed down and so on. All right, before we get to the next part, I wanna give a quick thanks to today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound. I've been using Epidemic Sound on almost every video I make on YouTube for the last two years. In my opinion, they have the best selection of music and sound effects, and they add new tracks every week. One of my favorite features is the ability to download individual stem tracks. If you like a track, but you only want this certain synth instrument, and if you're too lazy to record sound and also don't really know what you're doing, I just use their library with over 90,000 sound effects. All the sound effects I use in my videos I get from here, like this scene from a previous YouTube video I made. So if you want to check out Epidemic Sound, there's a link in my description to get a free 30-day trial. So if one movie about guys with guns in camo wasn't enough for you, well, here's another one. They're shooting this on the Sony Venice and these are the Tokina Vista Prime lenses, which are a fairly cheap lens compared to a lot of other lenses that get used on these size productions. Now what's the problem? We keep going out and achieving nothing. I keep putting my men in constant danger. It just feels like we're moving sand around a sandbox. So there's a few scenes that take place in this military base shed thing. And this shot here, we have two characters walking in a two shot. So for the lighting on this, we can see they have a huge amount of what looks like these Arimax 18K HMIs outside. And they're just blasting in through this gap up here and creating all this light. And it's sort of giving them a three quarter back side light as they're walking and creating all this light in the background and on the ground here. And it's just 
a lot of level. Then there's also this soft balloon type light up in the ceiling, which is, you know, maybe giving a bit more ambience. Then the only other light that you can see in the behind the scenes is this little panel light that they're walking with. And that would just be to push a bit more light into their eyes as they're walking. Then there's also got to be a light of some sort off to the camera right here, which is adding this light on their faces. So it's a pretty massive big lighting setup to do all this and it takes a lot of time but they shoot a few scenes in this location that's sort of blocked around this lighting setup like this next one here. John. Interpreter came through, huh? Just don't know how wild he is. Yeah, well, still saved eight people's lives. So I imagine they've still got those big HMI lights coming through the window behind, which is giving them a backlight and it's creating all this light on the ground here. Then they have what looks like an eight by eight diffusion with a light behind it, maybe like a sky panel or something. And that's creating this light on his face. So it sort of gives the illusion like that light from outside behind him is wrapping around and it's hitting his face. This net here would be from that light that's hitting that guy's back. Because he's closer to the light, he would be brighter, obviously. So what it does is brings the level of the light down without affecting the quality of it. So it doesn't soften or diffuse it, it just brings it a stop or two down depending how thick it is. So by doing that, it puts the focus more on the bright part of our main actor's face. Then they swing the camera around and they probably move that light that was here to over here and that's key lighting him. And it looks nice because you've got that dark side of his face contrasting with this bright silver background. And everything in these shots is just a simple two colors. You've got the green clothes on the characters and some of the walls in the background and then the different skin tones, which is also in the background. And it just makes it a bit easier to focus when there's so much busyness in the background, just having a couple of colors. So I know people are gonna say, hey, I can't afford 10 ARRI 18K lights, but don't worry, once you add them all up, it's not too expensive. Bruh. But if you can't afford half a million dollars for some lights, here's a cheaper option of filming in a similar location that looks just as good. So we've got this camera behind him, which is filming this shot. And then down there in the back, we've got this camera and that's filming this shot. And what they're doing with the blocking is the camera and the actors is having them parallel to this big square light source, which is the natural daylight coming in the room. So for this shot, they probably wouldn't be using any lights. Then when they come around to this single here, they've probably got something similar to what they had in that previous scene. And that would be sort of wrapping that light into his face. And on this shot, maybe the same, or maybe it could just be the natural daylight. Here's another one with maybe just one light as well. This guy walks over to the car and then there's back and forth dialogue between these two. So you can see this camera here would be doing this shot on him. And in this behind the scenes footage, you can see this equipment stand on the other side of the car. So that's probably got a light on it, which is giving a bit of a key light on his face. And then also you can see on this Odyssey monitor, false color, and it looks like the highlights are about to stop over and then the light gradually falls off around his face. Then when they swing around and do this reverse shot, that light that was probably here has moved over here. And just to get some more light on him underneath that hat, you can see the difference between the two, this mirror shot of him with no light and this other one when the light's on. All right, we'll look at this one last shot here. They've got the camera inside this helicopter looking out at this guy. They've got this four x four diffusion frame to soften the light above. Then I can imagine just before they rolled the camera, it was like, can we get a little more light into his eyes? So this guy here is just holding this small silver bounce, just boosting a little more light under that hat. And you know you're trying to get stuff done quickly when you're using a crew member as a lighting stand. All right, that'll do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching.